The rebel advance in Diara Congo opens the way for a possible advance on Goma, the provincial capital of the east, about 70 kilometers to the south. The rebels said that they did not face any opposition from the FARDC, the DRC's national army, as they captured the towns of Ntamugenga, Lubare, and Bunagana, an important mineral town since two days earlier. According to reports, the morale amongst the government troops is very low. Colonel Sultan Makenga, the head of the M23 rebels, told reporters hours after they took Lushuru on Sunday that they plan to leave all the towns they have taken except Bunagana. The rebels had taken the major town without a fight after the military beat a retreat in the hours before the fighters arrived. Until April, Makenga was an officer in the Congolese military. He and his men defected, accusing the government of not keeping its end of the March 23, 2009 peace deal that had paved the way for them to join the army in the first place. The new fighting in mineral-rich North Kivu province has lessened the hopes of a revival for the region after two decades of peace. Bunagana fell into rebel hands after the clash, according to the M23 spokesman and local civilians, causing around 600 Congolese soldiers to flee into Uganda. Despite outnumbering the rebels 10 to 1, the Congolese army has been unable to dislodge them from the hilltop hideouts. Elsewhere, South Sudan has marked its first year of independence amid its continued conflict with Sudan and domestic inter-ethnic tensions. One year into independence, South Sudan has made steps forward in nation building and building a legal framework, yet remains one of the world's poorest countries. Tensions with the Sudan, which the split was meant to end, have not yet been fully resolved. Landlocked South Sudan, which relies on the infrastructure of the north to export its oil, decided to stop pumping crude barely six months after becoming a state, yet oil is almost its only source of revenue. But Juba and Khartoum are talking again, and South Sudan has set conditions it wants to meet before oil starts flowing again. Once they give us a good price, guarantee that they will not again confiscate our oil, make sure that our export oil at the Port Sudan terminal will go smoothly, we will open within the next day. A number of world leaders like U.S. President Barack Obama, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and Nobel Peace Prize winner Desmond Tutu congratulated South Sudan and appealed for peace. The anniversary festivities were held at the Muslim of John Garanga, who died in a mysterious helicopter crash shortly after he signed the 2005 peace deal that paved the way for South Sudanese independence. Among the high-profile guests were UN Chief Ban Ki-moon, African Union Head Jean Ping, and political leaders from Uganda, Kenya, and Ethiopia.